perform for an audience of one, and that's God. Okay. Now this is a funny comedy show. This is to the comedians out there. Now this 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 is a rare round table to where you get to see more than one comedian. Just chop up game and kick shit around just so for the non-comedian, you can see how it is and we're chopping it up late night after the club, you know what I mean? Where we do our thing. And chop it up, like I said. What I want the student of comedy to do is to notice the different personalities and perspectives on what's funny in all of them affairs. So, without further ado, I want to ask, ask Rosie oh, about Roseanne Barr, Patrice O'Neill, oh, excuse me, uh, Bob Saget, uh, uh, Sandra Bernhard, and 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 I forget this guy's name, but it's his show, so I guess that don't matter. Here we go. Stop this. Oh. Speaking of uh, women taking risks. Yeah, I got in a little bit of trouble for that too. <laughs> <laughs> that is fucking it's so funny miracle. it's so funny but like I'll you tell you so out there right I'll tell you she looks like Hitler in a picture I don't look like Hitler just like Hitler like you have his age thank you now look at that now we know, especially as of late, through the Kyrie Irving, that uh, Hitler is a, 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 a untouchable topic. You're not supposed to be talking about it. They're supposed to say ain't nothing funny about Hitler. Roseanne Barr, who is Jewish, did a joke. You just saw the image with her taking some pictures of Hitler. It wasn't received well, but now let's look at it. Thank you. Check out my fucking Hitler shit. It's uh, it's Hitler. <laughs> These are little gingerbread Jews, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. It's like a Jewish woman, and she's dressed up like Hitler. And, um, you know, he's in drag, Hitler. <laughs> and he's baking cookies, and he's really proud of them. But also, he's looking off into the horizon because he has a dream. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking funny. Now, I know a lot of people will get offended by all that, but that's the thing about comedy. Anything can be funny. It takes more skill to take sensitive topics and make it funny, but anything can be funny, including Hitler, including funerals. Ain't shit funny about a funeral. Richard Pryor made a funny bit about funerals. It's for Heave Magazine. It was their Germany issue. And who who better a symbol of Germany than Hitler? <laughs> oh, my God. You don't want to piss off Jews. Even if you're a Jew, don't piss off Jews. <laughs> Nobody piss, pisses off Jews worse than Jews. Yeah, all Jews hate each They're other. That's Jews true. went crazy over this, understandably. Yeah, they, uh, but she did it anyway. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? She did it anyway. Why? It's something in the comedians, whereas if we know it's a sensitive topic, we're compelled to um, make the attempt to walk that tightrope. You know what I mean? To walk the edge and not fall. And shit. That's where the money is. So it, 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 you got to dare to be audacious. I don't see understand, but I'm like, I'm it really pissed me off because they're like, you're making fun of the, the people in the ovens. Well, I'm not making fun of the people. You kind of are, though. I kind of am not. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. I, I agree. I mean, shit, he's got some gingerbread Jews <laughs> looking off into the distance because he has a dream. What the fuck? What dream? He actually had big ass ovens. That's why it's funny, but. You know what I mean, but also that's why Patrice O'Neill pointed out you kind of are. Now, the only thing would have been worse if you made the cookie skinny. That's the truth. See, I love. Do you see that? Do you see how some people are? Ooh, ooh. Now look, there's a particular point that I'm going to get to within this clip, and I I encourage everyone that's a. Uh, lover of comedy, anybody that enjoys laughing, you will enjoy this round table right here. 
Um, Patrice O'Neill brings up, rest in peace, by the way, he brings up the true philosophy of comedy. So I'm not going to go through this whole 13 minutes segment. Let's see if I can get to it, though. Let me see. Oh, shit, man. They're not going to show me the picture. Okay. <laughs> I was hilarious to start doing comedy, man. Okay, there we go. I like that. I could do. That's what I could do. Right. I could do. Oh, okay, here we go. This is good. This is beautiful. It was good. I need to ask me who my favorite comedians are is Richard Pryor and George Carlin. And I didn't look at them and go. See, now, I'm going to tell you something that's interesting. Richard Pryor and George Carlin have always been two of my top comedians in which that I've used as mentors and senseis as far as subject matter and how to approach Paul Mooney as well now. Paul Mooney. Paul Mooney. Mustn't forget <laughs> the writer of Richard Pryor. Or for him. You know what I mean? He wrote a lot of Richard's material. But they showed you how to broach a topic. How to go about it and navigate it and not give a fuck. And then intelligently communicate your perspective. So it's interesting how you begin to notice that many comedians uh, view Richard Pryor and George Carlin as two of their favorite comedians. I think it's become a bit of a cliche now. It would be good to hear why they say it. I have my reasons, but it would be good to hear why those other ones do. I could do. That's what I could do. Right. I looked at them and said, I, I want to, I'm funny, but I can't do that. But you know what? Now they, people watch comedy and go, shit. They also inspire I can do that, that. shit. <laughs> and that's the hilarious. problem. That's the problem. That's the truth, see? That's exa exactly, Patrice. We start, start doing comedy, man. Wait, well, let's take it back. I can't do that. But you know what? Now they, people watch me, who my favorite comedians are, is Richard Pryor and George Carlin. And I didn't look at them and go, I could do. That's what I could do. Right. I looked at them and said, I, I want to, I'm funny, but I can't do that. But you know what? Now they, people watch comedy and go, shit. They also inspire I can do that, that shit. <laughs> I was hilarious to start doing comedy, man. I hear that. Comedy took all that. my funny that. way, man. Let me ask you this. Is it the commerce that did? See, see, see? That's profound. It is so interesting, man. Because Patrice is funny. You need to go check out his clips as well. I'm hilarious, if I do say so myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's profound, because now he's a working comic. Now, this this is why it's profound, okay? He's had success, television appearances. So for you're looking at him now. Why would a professional comedian say I was funnier before I started Doing it professionally. Isn't that interesting? So it's kind of like a basketball player saying they 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 played better before they went to the NBA. Right? Interesting. I was hilarious to start doing comedy, man. I hear that. Comedy took all that. my hear... funny way, man. Let me ask you this. Is it the commerce that did it to you? It's the fact that I had to pay a bill and the fact that when I first started, I used to care about whether this guy laughed, this guy, this woman. But then as I got my first uh, compliment on my first paycheck or whatever, it, I started to use people. You're talking about in a business sense? Thing. Like, or? if I think somebody is in here that could do something for my career, I'm using these people to show you how funny I am to get what I want as opposed to really loving them. When ooh! I'm ooh! Now, this is for the comedians that the Jedi's up, right? Notice what he said. See, this is why I always say that it's got to be in you and not on you to be a comedian. Because see, what he was talking about is how we end up <clears throat> walking with the comedy on us versus in us. And that's where that commerce comes in. Versus the reason why every true comedian does stand up. And I mean a true comedian. The one that was always funny, just like what he said. He was hilarious before he hit the stage. That's because that's just who the most high made us to be. The clowns, right? Clowns. Funnier before. I'm trying to love the people again. That's ah, what me. The love. That's So let me get to my point. The love is why we do it. We want to share love. To us, sharing laughter creating laughter, providing the gift of laughter for others is the greatest expression of love that we can give to people because that's us. 
Because that's coming from within us. That's the reason why I don't understand joke thieves. Because, motherfucker, you're not making people laugh. The author of the joke is making them laugh. Let's continue. How funny I am to get what I want as opposed to really loving them. But right. I'm, I'm trying to love the people again. That's what made me start comedy. So at what point did you realize that that had happened to you and you decided to... When I got stop? suicidal. <laughs> <laughs> He's telling the truth, though. I, too, have been suicidal. I've had thoughts of suicide. I guess that's suicidal. <laughs> Motherfucker, think about it. This fucking game, woo, life overall. But, man, this shit will get you with some body shots and kick you in the nuts, nigga. You go, you know what? Fuck. I'm, I'm through. But then something in you make you come back. But he's telling the truth. There's nothing funnier than the truth. But let's continue. I'm suicidal. <laughs> <laughs> I love the people again. That's what made me start comedy. So at what point did you realize that that had happened to you and you decided to... When I got stop? suicidal... <laughs> <laughs> when I was sitting there broke, this is back when Burger King first came out with 99 cent sandwiches, <laughs> and I had two of them on my stomach, one in my hand, and if I had a gun, because I came from the first time I ever did the Aspen Comedy Festival... For those of you that don't know, man, that shit is the showcase of all showcases. Used to be. Uh, you know, I mean, this digital shit has changed everything. But, man, but the era that he's talking about, man, it was a foregone conclusion to just even going to the Aspen Comedy Festival. Nigga, your life was set. Nigga, you were there. You Everybody who went got something. Some got more than others. <coughs> Excuse me. Some got more than others. But everybody's life changed for the good after going to the Aspen Comedy Festival. So, so I want to place it in perspective for you cats that are around here now. I killed so hard, I was scared I was going to be famous and shit. And then it didn't happen like I wanted it to ha happen. I mean, right where he talking about. Nigga, you do such a great job in front of the right people in the right situation. Nigga, you know, nigga, my <laughs> new life, baby. And then. <laughs> so hard, I was scared I was going to be famous and shit. And then it didn't happen like I wanted it to happen, and I got disappointed, and I said, fuck it. Let me just, I'm going to just do what I do, which is why motherfuckers don't know me from a goddamn... You heard the claps. Roseanne, whoa! Whoa! Listen to what he's saying. Now, he's still being a comedian, but see, that's a true comedian, right? Because we take from our life, and our life is the material. The premise of all the material, right? And so he's talking about it. But yeah, he's saying, and he's well known. It's interesting though, because now he has more fame once he left the planet because his words and his work, the quality of his work, the quality of the material is timeless, right? But he's cracking a joke, but he's also being realistic. Oh, whoa! We should be wooing. <laughs> well, what about your material, man? You feel about good it? about that? Yeah. Uh -huh. I love that. I love being able to say anything I want. Mm -hmm. I had to learn to stop caring about people not yeah. laughing. Because the, the idea of comedy, really. Mm, this is a nugget. Message. Did you hear what he said? Now that goes back to Bruce Lee saying, and we know he's a martial artist. This whole shit's about fighting. He said, don't fight. <laughs> don't punch <laughs> when you strike. Ain't that the same thing? But listen to what he's saying. We're doing comedy, but it's not about the laughter. See, this is some Jedi master. This is advanced right here. A lot of y'all ain't ready for this game. I had to learn to stop caring about people not yeah. laughing. Because the, the idea of comedy, really, is not everybody should be laughing. Right. It should be about 50 people laughing and 50 people horrified. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's supposed to be people like... Mic drop. If you want to be great, 